Okay, next job is to reattach the steam pipes. <coughs> so I've got it mounted in the retort stand here. All set up. I've already partially assembled it onto the base so that I could get the pipes bent up the right way, which I've done. So it's now off of the base again. I've got a couple of bits of uh, uh, wire locking wire up, pushed up through the portholes and into the pipes. This helps to make sure that you don't actually block up the pipes for solder. All we want is a little tiny bit of solder around the around the pipes and around the, the, the joint on the uh, engine frame. Okay, let's give it a go. I think that should do it. Just wanted the solder to flash round the joint. You don't need any more, that's more than enough. I think it has done that, so we'll let it cool and hopefully we're, we're done. Well, we've got the steam pipes reattached. A bit of delicate soldering and I think we're there. No blockages, so as far as I can tell. I haven't really managed to gaunt the paintwork on the base in a couple of places, but I can touch that up once I've got it all back together. Uh, I've got the uh, prop shaft and the prop shaft tunnel in place. I need to make, put it on a bit of a higher bit of wood because I can't rotate it at the moment like that. Anyway, next stage is the final assembly, which is putting the cover on, putting the cylinder and piston back on, and then seeing if the thing will actually run. Well, here is the ME1, finally done, all back together. And... Um, Cosmetically, I think it turned out quite nicely. I, I really like the um, boiler shroud, bearing in mind, of course, that this was a toilet brush holder. <laughs> Stainless steel came from a toilet brush holder. And I think that it turned out really, really well. There's a story to tell, though, still. Now, I have attempted to run this on air, and I'm so glad I did, because it just would not run. There were a ton of problems. <clears throat> we'll let it come round, and I'll, I'll focus in on those. So what problems? Well, first of all, once I put it back together, I discovered that the piston was binding in the cylinder. So I had to have all of that apart. It's a 5 16th diameter piston. So I put a 5 16th reamer up through the cylinder and that helped a lot. There was definitely something in the cylinder that was catching uh, and the reamer took care of that. But I still had to use some 400 grade wet and dry on the piston uh, and very gently sand it to get the piston and cylinder so that they were they would rotate freely basically when I put it together initially you rotate the uh, prop shaft and it would feel like a ratchet driver on a socket set it was literally that bad it was, it was just terrible so that was the first problem then I noticed that as I rotated the uh, prop shaft the big end of the con rod was actually moving slightly it was moving up and down the crank pin well what that indicates is that there's a misalignment between the cylinder and the and the flywheel and crank pin and basically after a close inspection i discovered that the entire engine cast engine frame here was bent it had obviously been dropped at some point in time so that required very delicate tweaking to get it as straight as i could um, so yeah, there was a there was a lot of playing around. What else is uh, wrong with it? Right. So the other problem was that the hole in the cast engine frame, where the cylinder retaining bolt goes through, had worn quite badly. So that hole is is quite a bit bigger than it should be. So that allows a lot of slop and movement in the piston. Um, and there wasn't really anything I could do about uh, about that. I mean. Um, yeah, you can make a bigger pin, but ultimately it's still got to be to um, it. It only goes through a very thin. It's because there's a cutout the other side for the 
uh, oiler pad it's quite th a thin wall here where where it goes through so even with a good fitting pin you're still going to get a lot of slop is basically is bad design basically so there wasn't really an awful lot i could do about that but um yeah i did finally get it to run on air so i guess all that remains is to see whether it will actually run on steam and uh, that's what we're going to do now so fingers crossed let's see what happens well, we've got some steam up and we've got a definite steam leak from the safety valve, but it may run. And it does. Well, sort of. Definitely need to that safety valve is, needs tweaking, but it is running on steam. Amazing. Well, sort of, for a bit. <laughs> I'm actually quite pleased because it, it, there's a lot less steam pressure getting to the engine because of because of the safety valve leak. So the fact that it's running is is good. And it's not making too much noise doing it either. But uh, yeah, not a complete and utter success, but it is it is running. which um, compared to what it was doing before I actually managed to do all my fettling, that is quite, quite amazing. It looks like uh, our dummy fake marine ME1 boiler is doing the, doing the job. This would have made quite a nice um, steam launch steamboat engine in its day. I mean, obviously, you've got nowhere regulating the, the speed, but um, you could put a simple radio control in a boat for a, a, a rudder to steer it. I think it would go really well. Yeah, excellent. I'm well pleased with that. As I said, I spent several hours yesterday playing around trying to get this thing to run on air and it was a right bugger. But we got there in the end. So there you go, Mammoth ME1, restored and running under its own steam. Excellent stuff. Well, I think it's about time we had a rest from marine engines, seeing as how we've uh, had several over the uh, last few months. So. Hopefully uh, it'll be something else next time. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the videos on the Mammon ME1 Marine engine. Thanks very much, as always, for watching. Cheers.